Well, April is National Oral Cancer Awareness Month, and a recent increase in new cases linked to human papillomavirus has one local doctor very concerned. He says the need to educate the public about prevention and early detection has never been greater. Joining us now is that physician, Dr. Brendan Galis, director of the Head and Neck Cancer Program at Scripps MD Anderson Cancer Center. Welcome. Thank you for having me. So as you know, about 54,000 or so new cases of oral cancer expected in the U.S. this year. HPV is linked to oral cancer and it's becoming more common in younger people. So how do you stem that tide? Well, the HPV virus is acquired um, during the um, years uh, following uh, patients becoming sexually active. This is a sexually transmitted disease. So it's usually acquired in the 20s and maybe 30s, and the disease takes about uh, 20 or 30 years to, to show itself. So uh, we're seeing um, a huge amount of, a uh, large amount of cases since uh, about the early 2000s. The incidence has risen quite sharply, about 2% every year, and we have about 34,000 cases of uh, tonsil and the back of the tongue cancers per year now. So HPV, though, is not the only risk factor, right? What are some of the other risk factors for oral cancers? So the front part of the mouth, which includes the tongue and the gums and the, uh, the lining of the cheeks, um, is not associated with HPV uh, in the vast majority of cases. Um, the, the, the two most important risk factors for that part of, of, of the mouth is smoking and drinking. Um, which fortunately has decreased over the years with, um, with education about smoke cessation and prevention, of course. Um, but those are the two main risk factors. Uh, but sometimes there are no risk factors. Uh, we think that diet may have a role, that obesity may play a role in some of these mouth cancers, uh, poor dental care. Um, but uh, oftentimes we don't find any risk factors. So as with all cancers, early detection, of course, is very important. Are there certain warning signs people should be looking for? Well, when, any, when anybody has a, a lesion in the mouth, on the tongue, um, either an ulceration or a red patch or a white patch, or um, they have some bleeding in the mouth, they, they need to get that checked out uh, immediately. And, the best place to do that uh, in the beginning from a, uh, pr from a screening point of view is in the dental office uh, with uh, either the dentists or dental hygienists who are looking in patients' mouths uh, all day long. Um, so this is a, a kind of a built-in screening tool that we have for mouth cancers. Um, but certainly if a patient feels or sees something in the mouth or feels a lump in their neck, they need to bring this to the attention of their primary care doctor so they can get an appropriate referral. Yeah, so make sure you don't miss those dental appointments. So what specifically Correct. is Scripps we'll MD right. Anderson doing for its patients? Scripps MD Anderson and Scripps Clinic has uh, a multidisciplinary approach uh, through our cancer program. These types of cancers are very involved. They involve many disciplines, surgeons, radiation oncologists, uh, chemotherapy doctors, immunotherapy doctors, social workers, speech, speech therapists. Um, uh, so we have a, a multidisciplinary approach to these tumors. We present these tumors at a big tumor board in front of um, many, many different disciplines um, so that we can make the best decisions for our patients. Dr. Brendan Galis with Scripps MD Anderson Cancer Center and Scripps Clinic, thank you so much for helping us raise awareness today. Thank you for having me.